We're in the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, and we're going to read down here in verse 21. The Bible says, My son, fear thou the Lord and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change. Meddle not with them that are given to change. Uh, wonderful portion of scripture. What does the word meddle mean? Meddle means to deal with, to kind of fiddle with it or whatever else. I'm going to meddle with whatever thing there. The Bible says you're not to meddle with them. Them, that's people. You know, a plural pronoun or whatever. Yeah, there you go. Meddle not with them that are given to change. They give in to change. Given means to kind of go along with, but you know, it's kind of an interesting little uh, cognitive scaffolding it's called, where you have the definition of a word is actually within the word. Give in. You go along with it. Very wonderful Bible, our King James Bible. Um, not to be replaced by the modern satanic versions. But um, metal not. Don't mess with the people that are given to change. Um, have we seen some changes here recently in our world? Uh, yes, we have. Um, there are people now that uh, uh, four or five years ago, they thought that breathing out of their mouth was normal. And now these people, um, they're afraid to breathe normally. They're afraid that somebody's spit might get in their mouth. I've never had anybody's spit get in my mouth. All right, all the years that I've been alive, and I've been alive for a few, a lot more than a lot of my viewers. Some of you have more years than I do, of course. But um, now all of a sudden there are people that believe that they need to change and that uh, breathing normally is now scary. And they are perpetually wearing face masks and uh, it's their right, they can do whatever they want. Um, I don't care if you want to wear a face mask all the time, whatever, but uh, I'm not going to meddle with you. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people think it's okay now for a man to marry a man. Um, you know, and let me just say this too about that whole issue. Sodomy has always been there. Right, as I said in another video a while back, sodomy's always been there. You look back through history, there's always been men that have you know, messed around with other men. Um, so that's not really the issue. It's not anti-sodomy. What it is, is the anti-weaponization of sodomy, where you have this political movement that started with uh, Greenwich Village or Greenwich Village. And uh, they started to come out and say, we will normalize this. We will force it upon you that you have to be okay with what we do. Um, no. And uh, you say, well, you do it with your Christian beliefs. No, actually we don't. Real true Christianity is uh, whosoever will. You want it? That You say, no, I don't. Okay, goodbye. See ya. Time to leave. I'm not going to force my beliefs on you. You can do whatever you feel like doing. Believe whatever you feel like believing. I believe in religious freedom, liberty of conscience, it's called. That's what I believe in. So, um, but I'm not okay with those changes. Uh, we have to have the right for men and men to marry and women and women to marry. Why? <laughs> what does that do? Well, then that makes us officially recognized as normal and whatever else. It normalizes what we do. Okay, um, my wife and I don't have a state marriage license uh, because it's not in the Bible. There's no scripture for that. I'm not going to go to the government and say, can we have permission to marry? Um, and we're perfectly legitimately married. We married um, her family, her parents were there, my parents were there, had multiple witnesses sign our marriage coverture. Completely legal in God's sight. And actually in the sight of the law, if you get right down to it, we have a legal marriage. So it's not that we're whoremongers living together or something like some people have tried to insult us with that stupid nonsense. Um, I'm not going to be given to the people that are meddle with the people that are given to change. You see, um, we have to be uh, sensitive of not misgendering somebody. Um, then I'm supposed to go against science and the Bible. I'm not okay with that. Um, I'm not okay with uh, forced things that happen in the shoulder, if you know what I mean. Uh, again, I can't say, speak completely clearly here on Goonie Tube, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm not okay with that stuff. I'm not okay with what the government has been doing in this country. 
I'm not okay with the the war in Ukraine. Um, I'm not okay with it. And you say, "What? Well, oh, you know, times are changing. Times are changing. Yes, they are for the worse." Um, I'm not going to be okay with that stuff. So, going forward, um, every one of us needs to declare, make a declaration of independence. Every single one of us. And we have to say, you know what? Here's my line in the sand. Don't cross the line with me. I don't want to fight. I'm not a violent person by nature or whatever else, but it's going too far now. Um, you're forcing me to meddle with them that are given to change to be okay with these people and uh, I saw how things were going back years ago in my home state of Pennsylvania and I saw a lot of things that were coming into there that I was not for I was not okay with and so I moved I got out of there uh, it's not oh you're just cowardly you left because you can't handle it or something else um, no, no, that's not it. I just see that there are some people that there's really no way to change their mind and you don't meddle with them. You see what I'm saying? Uh, there are some people that might be open to you explaining to them why their system is wrong, why they should be changing. There are other people, they're not open to it for one second. What do you do? Meddle not with them that are given to change. That's what you do. Get away from them. You read the book of Acts, the church of Jesus Christ um, read, regularly would flee to another place. They would leave. They would say, hey, you know what? It's not working out here. We better get out of here. Hey, the, uh, this crazy guy named Saul, um, he's coming after us, hailing men and women and committing them to prison and having them be put to death. You know, the Jews working with the Romans to persecute Christians. Um, I think we better leave. Hey, here comes Saul. And you know what? If uh, the people had just submitted and just willingly gotten down and said, okay, we're here, we can be killed. You can slaughter us all you want to. If they had done that, I believe that Saul would have never gotten saved. I believe that. But you see, he got frustrated like a lot of the goons do. The goons will get frustrated and they'll say, Every time we try to corner these people, they just go this way or they go that way. We put some of them to death, more of them come to come up and and uh, get saved and they make more trouble for us. And The church is not supposed to be a static, just stay in one place, whatever. We're supposed to move. We're supposed to say, okay, they're persecuting us here, we'll go over this way. They're going to try to take this freedom from us, we'll do this. They, don't, they can't let us... Uh, be online anymore. We have to have internet IDs to get online. Okay, then we'll start to do things the old fashioned way. You know, I really truly wish that we would go back to the first century practices of how they did church back then. And I don't just mean meeting in homes. What I mean is, you know, ordaining elders in every city. I wish we had that. And people come up with this thing, well, Brian, you show the problem with church buildings with 501c3 and all that other stuff. But what are you doing to fix it? I'm just one man. I'm not Jesus Christ. All right. Um, other brethren need to step up to the plate and say, you know what? I think we really need to have freedom here so we don't have to meddle with them that are given to, to change. Maybe we shouldn't have our church gatherings open to the public anymore. Maybe, just maybe, we shouldn't put them under federal government authority. Huh. What a thought. Yeah. Uh, maybe then we wouldn't have to compromise our beliefs and compromise our stands that we're supposed to be taking. Maybe we should get out of these church buildings and stop all the waste of God's money when the New Testament doesn't even say to build church buildings. Maybe we should just start to meet in homes so that when they come out with the, ne the next, uh, you know, big crisis, whatever it will be, and they say, hey, you know what? The churches followed us. The churches did what we told them to do back in 2020 through 2022, essentially. A little bit into 2023. There's probably still some that are uh, very much okay with the changes and love the changes. Uh, I never went along with it for one second, thankfully. But when the next round of changes come out, the Goonies will say, well, you went along with the last one. Why fight us now? 
Oh, well, uh, back then it was okay. Now it's, it's wrong for us to go along with you. Hypocrite. Hypocrite. That isn't going to work. I like to come out here and wondrously, you know, aimlessly walk through the woods <laughs> on my property here. Uh, we call this the healing woods here because uh, a lot of these trees are fir trees and uh, balsam fir. You can see a balsam fir trees have these little bumps on them and things like that. Little bumpy stuff and if you poke that there's sap inside that and it's actually antiseptic and ant antibiotic and whatever else. And uh, if you have a, a cut it will actually heal you. And uh, yes I have tried it and yes it does work. Excuse me here while I walk through. And it also these trees let off a uh, essential oil, which is really good for you. Uh, it helps your immune system get stronger and fight off disease and all kinds of stuff. Uh, Dr. Eric Berg talked about that in one of his videos, um, which uh, he's being uh, suppressed now too. Even though the guys helped literally untold millions of people, uh, us included. But uh, that's a whole other issue, isn't it? So, what I'm saying is, brethren, I believe firmly, I had a brother, older brother in the Lord tell me this, a graduate of PBI, and uh, years ago he told me this, sitting on his front porch, and he said, I believe that the church is going to have to come full circle, go back to the first century practices again. In other words, house churches, meeting in homes. Um, it isn't some kind of a magical thing, you know, they'll say, well, you know, they had 3,000 saved on the day of Pentecost. Where are they supposed to all meet? Huh? Is somebody going to fit 3,000 people in their living room? Ooh, oh, so brilliant. Well, obviously not. All right, where did they all meet? They met in individual homes. They separated, they split up. And they had an elder coming around and teaching them the word of God. You know, see, the New Testament church is not a bunch of people that just come every week to be fed by the same pastor and and they have pastor appreciation day and we love our preacher oh, oh. you know the the jack hiles thing you know we love you preacher oh yes we do we don't love anyone as much as you when you're not with us we're blue oh preacher we love you the girls sang that at jack or the uh, hiles anderson college they actually sang that blasphemous thing we don't love anyone as much as you. And he comes out, oh, you know, hey girls, oh, oh, where's the other girls at? You know, it's in my video, exposing Jack Hiles. Guy was wicked, completely wicked. Oh, but he was a good man to most Baptists because he was very, you know, successful. And that's a measure of uh, righteousness there, if you're a good Baptist. Um, just absolutely disgusting. So, a little hard sometimes walking back through here, especially when there's snow and then back down to the regular forest floor and underneath the trees. Had a good amount of snow here, but then it melted. Had some rain a number of days ago. But uh, there's a nice big rock back in here, right there. Metal, not with them that are given to change. Fill in the blank. Brother, you have to be okay with all these new things and, and new ways and no. Uh, I'm not going to meddle with that. No. Um, you see, the two ways of looking at this thing is you have to compromise and go against the scriptures in order to get more people in. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes, we'll do whatever is necessary to grow our church. And we'll go against the scriptures and we'll, we'll do worldly things to get people to come. Whatever it takes, brethren, it's, it's all about that, you know. Or you can just say, no, I'm actually not going to be compromising. I don't think so. Uh, I'll do things the Bible way. And if it's not in the scriptures, then, uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to mess with it. That's what, uh, that's what my method has been as much as possible. 
All right, well, just to conclude my little video here, just got a birch polypore mushroom. These are good, have some nutritional qualities to them. There's a bunch on this dead birch tree right here. You can see there's a bunch of them on here. Um, ugh, man, that's on there tough. Got another one. Um, lots of medicinal qualities to these things. So, so need to head back here and uh, finish up. I have a few other little videos to do quick. Some things Lord's put on my mind that I want to do. So, again, brethren, um, the changes that are coming to our world, you just have to get to the point where you say, you know what, I'm not meddling with them that are given to change. Uh, well, we have to do this in order to get people saved. Not if it's in the scriptures, we don't. And uh, God's going to make some things happen. Um, he's going to bring things back to where the just shall live by faith and not by sight, not by their church buildings and all the other stuff. Uh, the Lord's going to work it all out. So, uh, that is going to be it. And uh, we'll see you in upcoming videos. Thank you for watching.